So first of all, a thanks for watching. We just went past uh, 1 million hits combined on our two channels. That is Money Week videos and Money Content. And we're currently notching around 130,000 hits per month. And uh, that's around 50,000 of you tuning in to watch these videos. So a big thanks to whoever's out there watching and I hope you carry on enjoying the series. Now, today's video is gonna set the scene on pensions. The government is going to force everybody into what they call auto-enrollment, or at least make sure that you're given the choice to auto-enroll in an employer's pension scheme. So what I thought I'd do is set the scene on pensions in this video and use that as a platform later on to pull up one or two pensions-related issues in future videos. So, apologies for those people who know pension basics already. This will be pretty basic. For everyone else, this is the video that will set the scene on one or two aspects of pensions I'll be talking about later. So, what is the government's concern? Because this week, we saw the launch of the first phase of their new auto-enrollment scheme. So what exactly are they worried about? Well, their concern is essentially this. Basically, pensions can be split into two beasts, all right? The type of pension that you get is either. Now, if you're lucky, it'll be something called defined benefit, also known as final salary. Uh, more likely, I have to say, it's something called defined contribution. Also known as money purchase. Now, in theory, the government's auto-enrollment scheme rules could apply to either, but what are we talking about? They're much more likely to be this style. Okay, so why do I say you're lucky to have one of these? This used to be the way that lots of pensions were organized by the government and by companies, all right? But increasingly, uh, companies are closing these down because they're very expensive. Only around 5% of the FTSE 100 companies still operate a scheme of this type for their employees, all right? Now, a defined benefit final salary scheme works a little bit like this. When you leave a company, you need an income Okay, and you might need it for quite a long time because on average, a UK man lives until 77 and a UK woman lives until 82, uh, unless as a bloke, you happen to live in the wrong part of Glasgow, in which case I'm afraid you're looking at more like 62 according to the latest stats, all right? So it is nationwide area sensitive, but the point is that means if you, leave, if you live as a man until 77, let's say, and you want to retire at 60, that's 17 years when someone's got to provide you with an income because you won't be working anymore. That's the theory. Right, so one of these basically is your employer, all right, saying what I'll do to him under the really good schemes of the old days, if you like, is uh, every year that you are working for the company, I will put a contribution, okay, into a pot. You don't have to worry about that pot because out the other end, when you retire, you will get a proportion of your final salary as a pension. Okay, so for example, if you stay in my, in my company for 30 years, you might clock up 1 45th of your final salary as your pension for every year you stay here. So after a 30 year career, that's 30 45ths or two thirds of your final salary, whatever you were earning just before you retired, as a pension. And believe you me, that is pretty damn generous. Most people would give their right arm to have that kind of pension arrangement now, okay? Now, the reality is, if you work for the state, you may not be clocking up a 1 45th every year that you work. You may be only clocking up 1 60th, okay, or even 1 80th, right? So your final pension will be that bit lower. But the point is the principle that a final salary or defined benefit pension scheme, your employer or the state says, we will worry about how much needs to go in to fund the guaranteed pension you're going to get at the other end, all right? So it gives you a lot of peace of mind as an employee because you know that if you work a certain number of years, you are likely, not guaranteed, nothing's guaranteed, the government can always change the rules, but you're likely to get some proportion of your final salary as a pension. Now, 
Those are being gradually phased out. Companies have almost all but abandoned them, and even the state is trying to find ways to, uh, to cut the cost, okay? Not surprisingly, because they are incredibly expensive to operate. So over here, you have what most companies offer their employees, to find contribution or money purchase. Now, this is a different sort of deal. Okay, the deal over here is basically this. If there's your pension fund, now, what is that? That's a, what's happening is you're, you're handing your money over, and so is your employer, to <clears throat> a pensions company. It's being invested on your behalf by you know, a standard life or a Scottish widow's or whoever it happens to be. And the idea is that when you retire, the fund will buy you an income. Now, so in other words, what goes in is agreed or fixed between an employer and an employee. So for example, uh, just to pluck some numbers out of thin air, you might say, well, I'll put in 3% of my salary, okay, uh, every month as a contribution to this fund with an insurance company, whatever that insurance company happens to be, and your employer says, well, I'll match that. I'll put in 3% too. All right, what that means is you know what's going in. What you don't know is what's going to come out the other end. You have no idea, okay? There could be an enormous fund built up by the time you're 60, or it could be very small. And that's because what pops out the other end is a function of at least two things. The returns that the fund is able to generate while the money's in the fund. So imagine if you start contributing when you're, say, 30 years old, you retire at 60, that's 30 years of contributions going in, 3% from you, 3% from your employer, let's say. Uh, the fund is invested in the stock market, hopefully, successfully, by the insurance company involved. Some are better at it than others, frankly. And the bigger the fund, the bigger your pension is going to be at the other end. But it's also a function, not just of returns, but of something horrible sounding called annuity rates. Now, that's an expression designed to get people flicking off the videos and turning to the gin cabinet straight away. But don't panic. These are important, but they're actually not as complicated as they might sound. Here's what's happening. So, you put your 3% in from you and your employer over 30 years. Okay, the fund is then, let's say, worth £100,000 just before you retire. That would be a function of how the stock markets perform, for example, because it would be invested in stocks and bonds and so on. And some of those funds are high risk, some of them are lower risk. Bit of advice, if you're young, you need your money invested higher risk to get higher returns, but as you approach retirement, you want to see it shuffled into safer stuff, because what you don't want is a stock market crash the day before you retire. And here's the reason, because on the day you retire, the £100,000 is going to buy you a pension income. Where are you going to get that pension income from? We're under current rules, you have to buy with at least a decent chunk of it, an annuity. And an annuity is effectively you going to your pension company and saying, what income will you give me in return for this lump sum of £100,000? And the answer is, not very much. Um, just this morning, I looked up some numbers. If, as a man age 60, you'd accumulated £100,000 in your pension pot and you shopped around for a decent income, so remember, this is an income that's going to be, you're going to swap this £100,000 for an income in retirement, all right? If you're 60 years old, you want an income that's linked to the retail prices index, you want some inflation protection in retirement, okay? Uh, you want a five-year guarantee on that. You are looking at a shade under £3,000 a year as your pension, all right? Now, I don't know about you, but living on just under £3,000 a year is pretty tight. So if you're thinking, well, clearly, you need more than just under £3,000 a year, you can do the maths, all right? Now, very roughly speaking, if you had £300,000 to swap for an annuity, very roughly speaking, you could expect to get nearer £10,000 a year. If you got £600,000, just keep multiplying up, you could expect to get a pension income of more like £20,000 a year before tax. Right, pensioners do get taxed, okay? So, the point is this. How many people have anything like that amount of money saved up on retirement? And the answer is not very many of us. All right. So, in this introductory video, what the government's trying to do is to say, oh, crikey, we've got a bit of a crisis coming up. Those people lucky enough to be over here, 
will retire on their defined benefit final salary pensions, they'll probably be okay, but there are increasingly few of those around, or the ones that are around are changing the terms of the scheme, not allowing new joiners in, revising the fraction I mentioned, you know, using 60ths, 80ths, not 45ths. Okay, but nonetheless, they're probably mm, all right. Over here, though, you've got this money purchase catastrophe looming, all right, where people just don't realize how little their money is going to buy on retirement, or they do, and they're thinking, well, stuff that for a game of soldiers. If my employer says to me, we've got this marvellous pension scheme, Tim, and we put in 3% of your salary, what a lot of employees are probably doing is saying, any chance I can opt out of that and just have the cash, or just have some of it, All right? Because they're thinking, well, I'm never, going to I'm never going to save enough to retire, whatever I do. So, I won't go into the details here, watch out for future videos, but the government's auto-enrolment scheme launched this week is designed to try and push more employees into some sort of employer pension scheme, it's most likely, I have to say, to be of this variety. So there's still risk. Do not think that auto-enrolment somehow magically guarantees you some kind of old-fashioned defined benefit pension. It certainly doesn't do that. All right. And in future videos, I will cover in a little bit more detail as the scheme rolls out uh, exactly what the ramifications are. To download this free video to your favourite mobile device, find us on iTunes by searching for Money Week. And the entire video archive is also available free. Just visit moneyweek.com.